Hello class, this is your favorite biology teacher here with you again. We have a cool experiment to do today. We're going to be talking about catalyst and we're going to be talking about chemical reactions and evidences of chemical reactions. We got some cool stuff to work with here today. First off, let's look over here. We have this. This is a transformer. They give us a lot of voltage. It's going to change our 120 AC to DC. We have some cool sulfuric acid. We've got ourselves some little titanium uh, uh, wire hooks here. We have a fish bowl here full of just ordinary tap water. We've got ourselves a plastic bottle. That's going to come in handy. We got ourselves a couple of ring stands here, uh, our pliers. Alligator clip uh, for the wires. We got ourselves a candle, so hey, we're going to be using fire also. And we have these uh, clips here for the ring stands. Uh, don't go away. It's going to be interesting. You might want to find your earplugs. Now, we've got our sulfuric acid here. We've got a little fishbowl full of water here. We're going to take the acid and put a little bit of the acid in the water. There's a rule you remember in, in the lab. Do what you order, add the acid to the water. Never add water to the acid. So we're going to do this very carefully. And we're just going to pour a little bit of sulfuric acid into our water right there. And remember, sulfuric acid has what in it? It's got sulfur. But it's an acid, so you might want to look up, while we're waiting here, what color is sulfur? Okay class, we're about ready to get started here. We're going to turn our transformer on here, and you'll see we're going to get lots of voltage on it. We're going to get 31 volts, that's DC, that's quite a high voltage. And here's the cool stuff that's going on. Can you see what's going on right here? Move those little clip wires out of the way. Can you see the bubbles coming up right here? I'm going to try to get a little closer for you so you can see that. And let me just take a second to do that. Okay, there's our bubbles going like crazy. Now, we have to understand something here. You have to remember something about the structure of water. It's H2O, and the water's a polar molecule. Why is it a polar molecule? And we have on our, on our electrodes here, we have a positive side and we have a negative side, and we have bubbles. So we need to try to figure out what these bubbles are and why we're getting those bubbles. So we talked about the bubbles, but also remember, see the water? It's nice and clear, nice and clear. We can already see a color change starting to take place in the water that's in the bottle. All we did was fill the water, the bottle with water from the uh, fish bowl here. So whenever we have a chemical change take place, when we have a compound formed, there's always some indication of a ch chemical change taking place. What do we see? Bubbles. Starting to see a color change. Okay. And there's going to be some other ones. So we're going to let this go for a while, do a little cleanup, and we'll come back. There we go. Okay. H2O, water. We know that the water molecule is H2O. We also know from our reading that the hydrogen has a positive charge and the oxygen has a negative charge. That's one of the reasons why they stick together as a molecule. Nevertheless, what we're doing to our in our little experiment is it's a chemical reaction. We're putting energy in and it's causing this water molecule to split apart. It's splitting apart into hydrogen and oxygen and they're coming off as the bubbles that we're seeing coming off there. Now, why is this happening? Remember the electrodes that we put in the water? 
one of the electrodes had a positive side and the other one had a negative side. So what's going to be attracted to this one? The negative one, right? What's going to be attracted to this one? The positive part of the electron. So water molecules actually pulled apart because the negatives are going to the positive electrode and the positives are being pulled or going to the negative electrode. This is called electrolysis of water and it splits the water molecule apart. And any chemical reaction, you might remember, we have an arrow that indicates that the reaction goes that way, right? And what are the indications that there's a chemical reaction going on? Well, we got the bubbles. We're going to see a color change in the water inside the bottle. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to reverse this and make this gas that we're capturing inside the bottle go the other way. Because any chemical reaction, if it can go that way, it should be able to go the other way. Well, let's check our our bottle and we'll see how we're progressing over there. You can see that we're getting a definite color change inside of the water that's left inside our, our bottle here. And what's happening is these bubbles that are coming off the electrodes are going up, floating up, and the pressure of the gas inside is causing any water that's left in there to come out the bottom but we're actually splitting the water molecule apart. The water molecule is a very, very tough molecule. It's very hard to split apart. And it's taken a lot of energy to do this. Okay, so we're gonna let this keep going for a minute here. And it shouldn't take but a few more minutes. We'll get our oxygen and our hydrogen mix, mixture up above. What's making this all happen? We're gonna talk about that. Okay, we're back class. You can see our bottle is almost empty of water. There's a few bubbles still going, but can you see the color change here to the water? We got a nice yellow tint right here to the water. Let's get a closer look at that. You can see the water has a yellow coloration to it. And if you looked up the color of sulfur, you would realize that the color of sulfur is yellow. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off our power source here. We're going to disconnect our little alligator clips. We're going to get our bottle. We're going to lift it out very quickly and we're going to put the cap on the bottle just like that. Okay. So what's in our bottle? If we look, if we remember from our discussion up on the whiteboard up there, which is now backwards, we should have oxygen and hydrogen in here. Okay, we could figure out the ratio of oxygen and hydrogen very easily, but for our sake, we have oxygen and hydrogen in our little bottle right here. So we split, and, and it's kind of light. It's not real heavy, because hydrogen is lighter than air, right? So this is pretty light. It feels lighter than a normal bottle would feel, okay? So we're gonna have, gonna have a little fun with this in a minute, but first, we wanna take a thermometer. Where did our thermometer go? And we wanna do a little work with our thermometer. Let me find my thermometer. Duh. Here's our, here's our thermometer right here. We're just gonna take a real quick look at it. And the temperature of our water was 26.5 degrees Celsius, okay? You might be able to see it right there. It's between the 20 and the 30, okay? That's gonna become important, okay? So the room temperature, we're just gonna get the room temperature also here because when you have a chemical reactions, oftentimes the temperature changes. So we're gonna be looking for a temperature change. Okay, we got a couple of things we gotta get set up, so let's do that. And we've got hydrogen and oxygen in this bottle. We're gonna see if we can make water. According to our trusty thermometer here, the room temperature in the classroom is 25 degrees Celsius. So it's almost exactly as the same temperature of the water. 
And by the way, check out the water. It definitely has turned yellow. It's got a very definite yellow color to it. Okay, so we're gonna go on to our next little step of our experiment, which is making water from hydrogen and oxygen. We're gonna recombine them just like, just like we can break them apart in a chemical reaction. We're gonna put them back together. We're gonna to reverse the chemical reaction. Like I said, you might wanna find your earplugs. We have our little candle right here. All experiments that deal with fire are kind of interesting, aren't they? So here we go. Okay, class, I've got my earplugs in. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna light our little candle right here. Okay, so part of science is making good observations. And sometimes you have to make observations very quickly. This is one of those times when you've gotta make very quick observations. We're gonna take the cap off the bottle we're gonna put the mouth of the bottle right down here by the flame, and we're gonna see what happens. Make a little bit of water. Be very careful with what you, or be very, pay attention to what you see. What do we see coming out of there? We're gonna take our thermometer, we're gonna put it down inside our bottle. We're going to take our thermometer out of the bottle and it's up to 32 degrees Celsius. There you can see it. It's gone down a little bit already because when you take these thermometers out of the uh, out of the uh, whatever is causing them to the to uh, heat up or cool off, they react very quickly. So it went up to 32 degrees. So let's have a little discussion here of what we saw. What did you see come out of the end of the bottle? Big long flame, right? Did you see anything coming out else coming out of the end of the bottle right here? You're right. It looked like smoke was coming out. Actually, when you burn hydrogen with oxygen, it does not make smoke. It burns perfectly clean. It makes water. So what looked like smoke coming out was actually water condensing as it came out into the cooler air. Fascinating, huh? Busted our little bottle there. A lot of power there. Now. In our experiment, let's just turn back over here. In our experiment, we saw some changes take place. We saw the water change to yellow, indication. A color change is an indication that a chemical reaction is taking place. We saw a change in the temperature with our thermometer. A temperature change is an indication that a chemical reactions taking place. From the electrodes right here, we saw bubbles coming off. Bubbles are an indication of a chemical reaction taking place. Okay, I'm gonna show you another one. And you've probably seen this before. We've got just a little cold pack here. Of course, it's backward because I'm using the back side of the camera here. All we do is take this, hit it like this, Maybe you've used these before in athletics or something. And we put our thermometer on it, and our thermometer starts racing to the bottom. It's already down to 20 degrees Celsius right there. And it's gonna keep going down. Down to 20 degrees Celsius. Now it's down to 18 degrees Celsius. So this chemical reaction, instead of getting hot like this one, is getting cold. So a change in the temperature, either hotter or colder, is an indication that a chemical reaction is taking place. 
Now, a chemical reaction that gives off heat is called exothermic. A chemical reaction that takes in heat takes in the heat. You touch it, it's sucking in the heat from your hand, it, gets, it feels cold. That's called an endothermic reaction, it's taking in heat. Now throughout this whole thing, and our thermometer is down to, look at that, it's down to 17 degrees Celsius. What made our chemical reaction happen? Well, obviously, the electricity passing through the, across these two electrodes through the water caused the water molecule to split apart. There was something else. Why did we put the acid in the water? The acid acted as a catalyst. What do catalysts do? They speed up chemical reactions. So a catalyst is something that speeds up a chemical reaction. In biology, the catalysts we talk about are almost all enzymes. Enzymes are a protein molecule that cause chemical reactions to speed up. And they can go one way and then have a different enzyme that takes them back the other way. That's our experiment today. We're going to have a couple little things for you to discuss with yourselves about and try to figure out. This is always an interesting experiment. This is Keith Smith, your favorite biology teacher. Take care. Okay, we're back. So let's see what we got. Our little uh, project is still cooking there, but let's see if we, what we can remember about the water molecule. Water, oh, that didn't work. Forget that.